the Victoria Cross, Canada's highest honour for gallantry on the battlefield. And this was the last time a Canadian received one. Lieutenant Robert Hampton Gray, who died attacking a Japanese warship in 1945, days before the war ended. And yet, over more than a dozen years of combat in Afghanistan, not one VC was awarded. It was always kind of like stuck in the back of our, our minds that it just, it didn't feel right that nobody got the VC. For more than a year, veterans had been waging a campaign to convince the Defense Department to review and possibly award a VC to Private Jess La Rochelle, upgrading the bravery medal he won for action in Kandahar in 2006. The vets presented a 14,000-name petition to the House of Commons, convinced an MP to introduce a resolution to independently review bravery medals. They initiated a letter-writing campaign that generated 20,000 emails, all of it falling on deaf ears. As somebody that fought in Afghanistan, as somebody that, that, that bled and got shot, um, I am outraged by the fact that a lot of the guys did not get their proper the proper respect and dues for what they did over there. And it's literally, it's quite literally the least they could do. The Defense Department stands by its recommendations, saying Canadians receive more bravery awards in Afghanistan for the size of the mission than their allies. But acknowledge the medals and citations were all lower grade. It is simply a matter of nobody meeting that absolutely uh, extraordinary high standard that is required for the Victoria Cross. But veterans and some politicians don't buy that and worry the decision sets a precedent. Said the Victoria Cross, particularly the Canadian Victoria Cross, is now on this pedestal that really no one will ever attain based on Afghanistan. Another sore point for Afghan veterans, Canada is alone among its allies. The UK, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States have all presented top gallantry medals to a handful of their soldiers. Murray Brewster, CBC News, Ottawa. A living Canadian veteran of the Second World War is becoming a character in a five-part documentary series being shot in France. His memories of D-Day portrayed on the screen. License, ownership, and insurance. <laughs> How you doing, Jim? Jim Parks is 98 years old. He still drives, still works out. You're busy doing this, the abs and all this sort of stuff, and you're busy talking. And he still remembers vividly the day he, with the Winnipeg Rifles, made the D-Day landing on Juneau Beach. Our boat was hit. We had to, to sort of swim in, and there's a sand dune. We got there. You, you look, we look back, we could see some fellows still in the water. We don't know if they're alive or dead. That first-hand knowledge, a treasure for this filmmaker. Jim was a, a special witness, you know, he, he was there at any place and he saw many things. Parks and his late brother are characters in the upcoming documentary series on his unit, The Little Black Devils. Instead of burying that knowledge, he's bringing that, that, that knowledge forward. Pour ensuite affronter les SS. Parks hopes to be there when it premieres in 2024.